Hello and welcome to a Tune for Media lesson. Today I'm going to show you how to make the best out of Ableton's Looper. Uh, sorry about the sound quality of my voice. Uh, it's raining like crazy outside and I'm in a little bit of a minimalistic setup today. Okay, so let's start. So if you're not familiar with Ableton's Looper, first thing that you'll probably do is just drag the looper like that and this is perfectly fine you can you can use this looper in this way and you can get great results i should mention that this video is not about midi loops uh or midi clips it's about audio loops so i'm using the drum rack here with a few basic 808 sounds but you can easily replace them with audio tracks so if you look at the interface of the looper you'll see how many bars you want the loops to be for example i choose one bar and the quantization of the looper and the song control and tempo control and here you have what would you like the looper to do after a few bars after one bar i wanted to go to overdub or to play in this manner is just a very classic looper so you can get your click and probably want to send it to your queue because you don't want your audience to hear the click and simply doing something like that all right so this is a classic way of working with a looper now the problem with this way is that if you're using a looper for say drums or for a few tracks simultaneously this creates a problem you don't have any control over the mix uh, of the different elements of the loop so instead of doing this what I'm going to do now is just clear this I'm going to copy that and in drum rack you can actually uh, open each sample as an individual channel like that and I'm just gonna place the looper on each channel and now I want to activate all of them at the same time so I can do um, with the keyboard command K because I just want to map it to a key on my keyboard. Uh, let's just use uh, V. I don't know why. <laughs> In this way I can make exactly the same loop uh, but now I will have control because I have three individual loopers for each channel so I I'm able to control the mix. Pretty cool. So in this case, we basically have three individual loopers uh, working in sync together and I'm able to mix the elements after the loop. So what's next? If I have an arrangement and my song is not exactly improvised on stage, I can actually call the loops in automations. So let's just uh, create a dummy track. This is just to count and then move to the next track. And let's just create like, let's say my song is eight bar long uh, and it's not looped and I'm going here to the automation in E here in envelopes and I want my song to start with a looper on the kick I'm just selecting from here uh, the kick core kick 808 looper so this is the first looper and putting the state on record so you can you have record play overdub and stop so I'm putting on record and then just wanted to keep going all the way throughout my song. Can actually take out the bass in some sections, bring it back maybe in the chorus. So it's pretty powerful if you have an arrangement and you want to call the looper to do stuff during this arrangement. And let's say on the second bar, I want the snare looper to start recording. So I'm choosing a snare looper and state and record and then I wanted to play for the rest of the track and finally the third bar I want the hi-hat looper record and just play it for the rest of the track so now I have something like that
So my loopers were actually activated uh, in a sequence uh, of automations. So this is very powerful. If you have an arrangement on stage, it allows you to focus more on just playing the loops and not just pressing down buttons to activate loopers. And here's another cool trick you can do with the looper. Um, you can actually change the pattern uh, using effects. So for example, I want to use the beat repeat uh, and let's say I just want it for one beat or a quarter note here four sixteenth let's just keep it like that do some variations and without the mix of the original loop let's just deactivate it and let's say I want after four bars I want the beat repeat of the hi-hat to be activated so I'm just doing this and for the rest of the song so now I'll create a loop with automations and after four bars my hi-hat will start to do all these crazy beat repeat um, random patterns so let's have a look Pretty cool, huh? So I hope you learned a few things about this looper. I think this is a very powerful feature on Ableton once you know how to, how to use it. And thank you for watching and see you next time. Stay tuned.